And we're back with some more oxygen not included on our baby mini base. Now, today, today is a special day. We finally get around to the sour gas boiler. I think I've been talking about it for oh, God knows how long, but there was just too much to do in the meantime, which of course I didn't anticipate correctly. Uh, I've done a, a few minor changes in the background in between episodes. I uh, doubled down on the amount of deodorizers we were using. I, I want to get rid of this polluted water as much as possible, but we might as well get as much clay as we can. We're up to almost 400 tonnes of this stuff. I don't think I can turn it all into ceramic. How much, how much coal have we got? You know what, let, let's, let's queue up some more ceramic. We'll find a use for this stuff. Oh, uh, a couple of changes in the background before we started on the sour gas boiler. Turns out there's a bit of a problem with the uh, steam turbines down here. I had ladder segments all the way across here, and my steam turbines would not cool down. Even with, I switched all the pipes to radiant gold or radiant copper, would not make a difference. But once I installed these metal tiles up here, suddenly the whole place became nice and chill. Stopped being 100 degrees down here. Just something to note if you're having problems cooling down your steam turbines, put in a few metal tiles nearby. It seems to help an awful lot. I don't know why, and I haven't bothered really investigating it too deeply. Uh, we will take the rust. Uh, when, uh, oh, and over here, there were quite a few helpful suggestions to move all of this all the way over to the left. That water cooler used to be on that side, and it was cutting down on the amount of decor that we were spamming over to the left-hand side of the map. As you can see, now we've got our decor all the way over to the side bed. Okay, it only gets 216 decor, but it's better than what it was getting. Uh, who's got the best? Right about here is probably right in the middle, so you're getting 864 from all the pedestals. Yeah, this, everyone who's sleeping on this side, yeah, they're, they're getting so much decor out of this. Eh, but with all of that done, it's time to get started. Oh yeah, building this shouldn't be that bad, because I've done some prep work in the background, I know what I'm trying to build. The hard part's going to be explaining it all. The first things we're going to install down here are the basics of any, uh, well, any setup involving sour gas boiling. Thermal aqua tuner, you need, you're definitely going to need one of those, unless you're going with some sort of volcanic heat source. And then normally a liquid tepidizer. This is in case you produce too much cooling, you need something to gen put heat back into it, and liquid tepidizers produce more heat than anything watt for watt. They're amazingly good at generating heat. So those two are pretty much your, your, your bare bones basic necessities. Now we get to put in the more complicated bits. First up, we have to fill this with water. Um, this needs to be in a medium to actually generate any heat, so water seems like the perfect one. We don't have to fill it up too much, just enough that it's in enough, uh, enough of a layer that it will operate. If it's in too shallow, it won't. But I'm going to err on the side of caution and put in quite a bit of water here. Trying to explain this next bit is going to be difficult. It's one of the reasons I, I, I've very rarely done the sour gas boilers. They're just so... The explanation is like trying to explain alchemy, it, because it doesn't make sense. Um, all right, we'll put in two thermal sensors here, actually. Uh, we're going to need uh, an automation wire going from this down to the door, and I might have to deconstruct a block to get at it. But this piping section here, this piping is going to be what provides our cooling. We're going to be cooling down all our sour gas in here, and we're going to be boiling all our crude oil over here. So we'll be boiling our crude oil into sour gas, and we'll be freezing down our sour gas into methane over here. Methane? Methane? Methane. Methane. So once the methane is frozen down here, we'll be dumping it up this way into, well, what, what, what will become clearer once we've, finished, uh, once we've finished the bottom half, which is still going to be a little bit tricky. We're also going to need to put some water in here. I would prefer to have at least a couple of tons, just to make sure we've got a lot of water to work with when the time comes. It's just the more water you have in here, the more stable it is, and the longer it takes for it to go over, over capacity. Uh, if you have only a small amount of water, if something goes horribly wrong, it can heat up too quickly or lose heat too quickly. You have plenty of mass in there, it just helps stabilize things. So, we're looking at about a ton and a half. Let's wait until that's two. Yeah, that looks like a good two tons to me. Or close enough anyway. We will disconnect that there. Boom. And uh, let's clean up this mess. Oh, wait. No, I need more water over here. I've forgotten. This design is... This design is going to be interesting. I honestly swear, there is reasons for all of this stuff. But trying to explain it as you build it is almost impossible. Um, I could try explaining it, but honestly it would be really confusing to look at. This here is just a, our little steam pool. This here is going to be a sort of heat sink. I'll have to get around to explain it later. And this water down here is going to be used for providing our heat source. Uh, yeah, you can see the heating cooling loop going on here. And this water in here is going to, it's really going to help us later on. It'll become more, it'll become clearer as we start to freeze things. Before we seal this place up though, we are going to have to vacuum it out. A bit of a problem, but we're going to make sure we get all of our infrastructure in place and everything sorted and then we'll vacuum it out as normal. Uh, I think we're going to build this in two halves. We'll build the bottom half first and then we'll vacuum out the top half and build that second. In fact, most of the top half is going to be a solid brick for heat transfer, so we should be fine. Oh, 
Come on, guys, you can build some of that stuff, right? Ah, perfect, perfect. I was worried for a second there they wouldn't be able to build some of that power or cabling. A ah, quick trip with the gas pump and we should be able to vacuum this place out in no time at all, especially considering how tiny the actual space is. Uh, once that's vacuumed out, we can seal this up and that will be the bottom half done. Hmm, I'm going to fill it up with super coolant. Wait, actually, maybe not just yet. We're going to need a vacuum in there first, otherwise we're going to start dumping heat into this section as well. There we go, the bottom half of this is now finished. It, it, I swear, it will make sense. It's just really hard. Uh, the super coolant will come across here, go around this loop here, and it's going to cool down this entire area. This, of course, will generate a bunch of heat, because if you extract heat from something, it, it just moves the heat around when you're using an aqua tuner. So this place is going to get really hot, this place is going to get really cold. The oil will get dropped here to get turned into sour gas, and the methane, methane will get, or the sour gas will get dumped here to get turned into methane. Now we got to put together some counterflows and gas pumps and all sorts of shenaniganry above here, but that's not too bad. It's just uh, building a counterflow and making sure we remember to put everything in. Well, trying to fill this in, I've noticed something. Uh, I think I replaced some of the igneous tiles here, or there were sedimentary rock tiles with igneous ones. Now I've got an annoying bunch of, of, of debris down there. And I thought I could live with it. I thought I could just leave it there, but I can't. That's got to go. So one second while I just vacuum this place out and do a little bit of housekeeping. Enough of that. We need to uh, start bricking in this sort of counterflow heat exchange. We've got the gas pipes, this gas, the sour gas is going to get pumped down here and it's going to counterflow against the methane coming up the opposite direction. Now we just have to put a transfer medium in the way and gas is no good. You need metal tiles and insulated tiles in a sort of a, a checkerboard pattern. This is starting to finally take shape. This counterflow, as you can see, is going to be metal tile we made out of gold, igneous rock tile, gold tile, alternating. Liquid pipe follows it precisely. We'll just put another layer on top here, say insulated, insulated, uh, put a gold tile in the middle. And that's pretty much all the way up to the top, that's how we're going to do it. Once we get this built all the way up to the top here, what we can do is use these gas pumps here to vacuum it out. Though I might want to make a few minor changes here. Let's uh, dig that out there. And we're going to need some sort of exit pipe here to vacuum out all the gases from this area. Should be fairly straightforward. That will vacuum out all the gas that's in there. That might take a bit of a while though, it, it's got to drag all the gases from down here. That's, you, can, you can almost see it actually with the animation, you can see it sucking the gas out. That's going to take an annoyingly amount, large amount of time, just because of the distance it's going to have to travel. We're probably almost at vacuum stage up here. Yeah, we are. At points, we're already up to vacuum. So, yeah, that's just going to be a case of waiting. However, up here, we have to put in the uh, the extraction for the, the natural gas. The natural gas from here is going to have to be pumped over to our industrial sauna down here. So let's get our, that underway while we're waiting for this all to uh, get pumped out. I, of course, forgot to put in the piping, so we'll have to go back in there, but... I'm not going to mess up the vacuum. I'm going to put in uh, one of these right here. Oh, you can go. I'm going to put in one of these right here, and we're going to break in like normal people. There we go. And we'll get that'll get us all the way in without causing any terrible harm to this location. All right, this is finally a vacuum. This here is also a vacuum. This is where we're going to store all our natural gas. Well, up to 20 kilos of natural gas. That will give us a nice little bit of a backup. All of that natural gas will then have to get pumped out of there well, once we get rid of that. Uh, if the pressure in there is above 20 kilos. We'll link this down here. We'll make some changes to these pipings. That looks more like it. So the natural gas we do collect, we'll, well, assuming this all works, we'll go down here all the way across and we'll dump it into our industrial sauna. Over here though, hmm. Okay, how do I explain all of this without seeming like a crazy person? You know what? I say we fire it up and then I won't seem so crazy. Well, okay, maybe maybe I'll seem slightly less crazy. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. I was about to try and start this and th this is not submerged in water. It's 386 kilos. How are you not submerged in water and how did I not notice for this long? Right, uh, I need a visco gel lock and I need to break in there without damaging this whole thing. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna need a second. Oh well, the game decided to crush my liquid lock for some reason and all of the visco gel blob down here. Somehow oxygen got in this section. Doesn't matter, it's only the bottom part, we can get rid of all of that. First though, water needs to come in here. We're just going to pour it in this section and it will roll down. It should be fine. All, all we want is just enough liquid to make sure this is submerged. All right, are you submerged? Wow, now you're submerged. That's all it took. Ugh. You know what, we're going to make sure you're full though. Are you good? Yep, yep, you're good. 700 and something. You're grand. All right, we'll get rid of all of this junk out of here. We'll close this, well, we'll vacuum this sucker out and we'll close it back up again. 
there is always something. I always mess up somewhere, but it's fine. It's fine. If this is the only thing that goes wrong putting this together today, I will be very happy, actually. This, this, is, this is only minor. Vacuum again. Perfect. So we are finally ready to get this warmed up, let's say. Cool down, cool down, and warmed up. This is going to dump super coolant across here. Oh, let's uh, make sure those doors stay open. We, this is for injecting heat into the system. We don't want to be injecting any heat in there just yet. Let's start with the simple bits. And maybe slow it down a bit so I don't lose track of anything. The super coolant comes in here. It's 30 degrees going in. Coming out through the side, it's 16. And it's going to keep dropping and dropping and dropping. As it passes through here, it's going to cool down this area. We need to get this area down to... Minus 168C. Once it's at minus 168C, it will start... It's cold enough to freeze sour gas into methane. Which is exactly what we want. However, on the same side over here, we've got some other automation set up. Oh, wait, wait. I, I forgot this bit. This liquid sensor detects if the supercoolant goes below minus 183. If you go below... If you go to minus 184, what'll happen is the liquid methane will actually freeze solid. And we don't want that. That would be bad. So if it goes below minus 183, this door will engage. And what that will do is it'll suck heat from this area down here and inject heat into this area, and it'll stop it from freezing solid. Okay, um, this over here, make sure that this stays up at 555C. We're heating up this water until it hits 555C, so that the crude oil we're going to drop down here, which we'll, we'll cover in a bit, will get heated up, turned into sour gas, and then that will get pushed up there. That's the basics of it. Now let's skip this forward while this all... Uh, kicks into gear. You're going. You're probably wondering why I have these two blobs of water here. Well, there's about a ton of water in each tile, and they're going to become frozen blocks of ice that are going to become very important. Well, reasonably important a bit later. Up here is a flow control. It's only set to 630 grams. We're not... This is a mini sour gas boiler. I know, it's kind of huge, but it actually is kind of a small sour gas boiler, believe it or not. Oop, water is about to hit freezing point, is it? Yeah, there we go. That's one of them frozen. Second one frozen. Nice. Uh, once both of these are set up, we can start dumping in our cr Ooh. One moment. We wanna, we've wanna we injected enough, so let's take get rid of this. Preferably... Ah, yes. I was, I was worried that might actually pop out the other side, but it didn't. If it popped out that side, it would just be, you know, an inconvenience. We already have a little bit more dirt in there than I'm comfortable with. That igneous rock debris, I couldn't get it out. I couldn't figure out a way to get the ladders down and remove it, so... Yeah, that's just there now. Okay. Well, uh, I'll skip this forward until this is just about ready to be t for us to dump in the crude oil. All right, the super coolant passing through here has hit that uh, annoying point. It's now it's getting so cold it's minus 183. If it gets any colder than that, we start running into problems. Super coolant can only go so cold before it stops actually generating any more chill as, or any more heat. As in, we can only suck so much heat out of it. Once we get it down to, I think it's minus 200 and something, 270, I want to say. Once it gets that cold, it will no longer generate any heat as it passes through here. It's just, it's reached its maximum chill point and it won't break the pipes unlike every other liquid. So this just makes sure we, we still are able to generate the heat necessary to get this whole uh, boiler warmed up. I was wondering about something. I was wondering why these, uh, the, the ice and everything in here wasn't as cold as I thought it was going to get. Then it turns out I hadn't made these radiant liquid pipes out of thermium, I'd made them out of copper. Everything else I made out of thermium, but yeah, down here I use copper for some reason. God knows why. Uh, one moment while we break in here. All right, this is should be relatively easy, though. Oh, I may have to dismantle that tile for them to get in. You know what? It's fine. That shouldn't cause any issues. Fairly straightforward. Okay, we got everything out. Let's brick this back up. We are getting very close. This is up to 357, slowly going up the way, but you'll notice over here this is opening and closing rapidly. What's going on here is the supercoolant has managed to cool down this area to minus 174, which is perfect. So long as it doesn't go below minus 178, 184, we're fine. So everything in here is just about right. It's below minus 168 where things liquefy, but not so high that uh, it's going to solidify things. And that door just keeps opening and closing rapidly to help prevent any problems. And now we just got to wait until that hits 555 and we can start throwing our crude oil in. Just before this finishes up, I want to check something here. This place appears to go nuts every so often and just spams a bunch of polluted oxygen, drives the gas pressure in here to absolutely ludicrous levels, and then uh, just becomes pure oxygen at about seven or seven to nine kilos of pressure for no reason that I can figure out. This whole thing just goes nuts. It's amazing. We get uh, so much clay in such a short period of time. What, 399.6 tons? Uh, oh, no, 0.8 tons now. And if we give that another moment, I'm sure it'll go up again. Yeah, 0.9 tons. Oh, wait, 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 we're done. 
we're ready to start. Oh yes, 555. We can start dripping oil in here. And the oil is going to come in from down here. I have flow control limited to this. Or wait, no, I haven't. We will flow control that to 945. And the reason for 945 is because two thirds of this is going to get turned into natural gas. You lose some of the, uh, the crude oil along the way. So come on, turn that. Yes, there we go, 945 grams. So that 945 grams of crude oil comes up here, goes down to this system here. You know what, let's slow this down a bit. And then starts dropping down here. Now you'll notice we've put it through a mesh tile and all this. It means this is flowing down as a blob. If you check the gas liquid overlay, you'll see that that's actually pushing itself down and sliding off the walls. And as it does, it uh, forces the gas up. So if you check down here, the gas is actually, what, only a, about a kilo? So the amount of liquid that's flowing down pushes up the, at the same amount of gas. So it just means that we're not left with a whole bunch of gas down here trying to force its way up, which it can't do. And instead, ooh, what's going on over here? Ooh, yeah, the, the natural gas, is, or the sour gas has arrived over here. Sorry, I'll go back. Crude oil comes down here, flashes to petroleum right about there. You can just see it. And then the moment it touches this, it flashes to sour gas. The sour gas flows all the way back up here. There it gets picked up by these gas pumps. These gas pumps pump it out. And it goes down here through our counter flow. And it goes all the way down here. And once it gets down to here, it's frozen. And it turns into a liquid. Now, I have set this to, oh, only if that's above 5 kilos. For now, if that's above 5 kilos, it starts pumping it out. So this liquid pump only activates it's if it's above 5 kilos. If it is, it gets pumped into this, which is set to 630 grams. 630 grams is two-thirds of the 945 kilos of, or grams of oil we're pumping in there, so we should get have exactly that much coming in once it hits 5 kilos. That counterflows up here, and it's sort of counterflowing opposite the gas. So the gas is flowing one direction, oil the other. Gas, uh, methane. Gas, methane. The methane flows up here, and by the time it gets to the top, it's about 156 degrees. From its starting point of... Come on, give me give me just a little bit of me... Give me some methane. Don't be mean. Oh, wait, there we are. Uh, it's minus 164. And as you can see, it rapidly plummets in temperature as it goes up through here. Now, you're, you might be wondering why it doesn't immediately break the pipes. It's below a kilo. If you have below a kilo of liquid in a liquid pipe, it can't state change. So it doesn't matter how hot or cold it gets. With natural gas, it's, well, with gas, it's actually a similar thing, but we don't have to worry about that here. With gas, if it's one-tenth of the amount in the pipe, so 100 grams, same thing, it can't stay changed, so you could freeze it. And that's pretty much it. Now, uh, what do we got down here? You know what? This needs to stabilize, so we'll put that up to 10 kilos. There's a bit of a balancing act going on here. This generates chill. I'll go into a lot more detail about it later, but this generates chill. That chill needs to go over here but it also has to generate heat. So it has to provide a balance of both. And if it's providing too much chill and not enough heat or too much heat and not enough chill, things will go badly. Well, more if it's generating too much heat and not enough chill, things go badly wrong. So we have to balance this all out and that's why this design is built this way. So while all of that is going on, I slowly increase this. So I'll increase this to 10 kilos. Once we have 10 kilos of pressure in here, I'll probably up it to 15 after it's run for a bit and stabilized. So let's fast forward this a bit. Uh, oh, have we already got up to 20 kilos of pressure? Oh, we have. Uh, well, we start. We need to start putting in an overflow system on this. Hmm. One minute. We need to have it so that if there's natural gas backed up, these things activate. Otherwise, this will back up and eventually we'll have a thousand kilos of natural gas pressure in here. At which point, you know, things will go badly wrong. Uh, because with a thousand kilos of natural gas pressure in here, no more liquid will be able to get in and the whole system will back up. So, yeah, if that goes up to a thousand kilos of gas pressure, this liquid no longer will be able to escape. This liquid will all back up down here, and then the whole system will fall apart. Right, uh, give me one minute to come up with a quick overflow system for this. All right, I think that should sol- ah, actually, that's not going to solve it too much, is it? Hmm. We need to burn off more natural gas from this direction. This one's not quite perfect. There we go. Now it's perfect. Um, wait, no. Wrong. Bold. All right, very simple system. Natural gas comes down here, hits this bridge, crosses over, and starts going this direction. If, oh, damn it. If it backs up, what'll happen is it'll hit this overflow point. So if it backs up through here, it'll pop out this side, triggering this sensor. This sensor goes, wait, there's too much natural gas. It activates this automation signal. That automation signal turns on the generators. Also, if the generators need natural gas, they'll just turn on themselves. I'll have to do something about this. This up here is all our excess natural gas. I'll have to figure out some way to feed that into the system, but that can wait a minute. Why is this stopped? 
Damn it, what have I broken? Alright, I think I know what happened here. I overfilled the loop. Rookie mistake. Uh, I've just uh, jogged it by starting this up again, but I think the moment that stops it's going to have problems starting up. We need to drain one blob of coolant from this. Ah, good job we left the door open. I think we can just put a liquid bridge across and take mm, one blob out. Yeah, that should be fairly simple. If we just do this and put one liquid pipe right there, that should take out one perfect blob of super coolant. And that should make sure the system never has any problems. <laughs> Would you look at that? We extracted exactly 10 kilo, uh, one 10 kilo blob of super coolant. Now the system should run just fine. Ah, nice. There we go. So how's this system doing up here? Okay, we've backed up about 20, 30 kilos of sour gas. Oops. That's that's fine. There, there was a little bit of a backup in the system because while this stopped extracting, this one kept boiling. There we go. You know what? We will make that 20 kilos. I'm going to keep upping this slowly but surely until we hit about 200 kilos to make sure we have a nice, smooth liquid flow in there. All right. And that keeps our natural gas flowing, and this keeps making sure we burn it off. Right, uh, the reason we have... where is it? Where is our natural gas? There, 630? Well, we've got seven natural gas generators. Each one burns 90 grams, so 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63. So 630 grams of natural gas. This means, assuming we've done all of our math correctly, this thing should be able to run seven natural gas generators perfectly, non-stop, for all eternity. That's the theory. Um, it is precisely balanced and it seems to be kind of working. I'm a little bit shocked to be honest. But that means we now have, well, each one generates 800 watts, 8, 16, 24. We're going to generate a lot, of kil a lot of watts here. We've got plenty of electricity to work with. I'm just not sure what we're going to do the rest. We still have to put in our second rocket silo. But uh, I think that's going to have to hold off until we can get our hands on a lot of insulation. I mean, a lot of insulation. The reason being, we need to take all of our liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen from over here, put it in insulated liquid pipes to get it all the way to the opposite side of the map. Otherwise, we'd have to run loops all the way there and back, and that's just way too complicated. Also, it would probably shatter in the pipes before we got there. So we need perfect insulation to make sure it happens. That's going to require a lot of it. So uh, several more missions will be required, but I think that is a good sour gas boiler. Now let's go into the design. Um, some of the sillier features like these blobs of ice. Why are they here, you might be wondering. Well, people would call this a temperature regulator, but really it's just a fancy way of saying we want to keep the temperature from going too far too fast. Uh, let's make that 50 kilos while we're waiting. For example, if we just click on the ice here and we go into properties, you'll see the temperature there. It's very slowly moving. Uh, 173, then you can see the aqua tuner turns on and it kind of goes back down again. Let's look at this metal tile of thermium, which is normally what you do. You just put a bunch of metal tiles here. But look at the temperature on that. It's fluctuating wildly. It's going up and down rapidly and it's oscillating way too quickly. The reason for this is just imagine you were holding a hundred grams of gold in your hand. Or a hundred grams of some metal in your hand. You could actually warm it up really quickly with your own body heat because its specific heat capacity is really low. It doesn't hold a lot of temperature in it. But if you were to hold 100 grams of ice in your hands, that ice actually has a specific heat capacity of three times greater than that, well, thermium gold, whatever you want to call it. So it would take you three times as long of holding that cold ice in your hand before you'd have dumped the same amount of heat in it. Because it just, there's more chill in it to, to take care of. It just has a greater heat capacity to hold uh, heat and cold. Not only that, because ice has three times the specific heat capacity of metal, of this metal, that is wonderful, but also, this is only 100 kilos of thermium. This is 999 kilos of ice. So we've got three times the heat capacity and 10 times the mass, which means there's 30 times the capacity for holding temperature inside it. That means we don't... Why did... Why did I get a power warning there? I got a power warning. How? Are we, like, draining the battery so rapidly? Why are you not turning stuff on? You're linked up. Something's backed up. No! What the hell? Okay, so... What has happened here? The natural gas flows all the way up here, and that goes up to there. Somehow we have gotten regolith in there, and that regolith has caused us problems. There we go. Close that back up again. Quick, 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 quick. Keep, keep venting, keep venting. Yeah, there we go. Whew. 
Okay, natural gas is now back up and running. That should mean our power supply is up and running. And I need to do something to make sure that doesn't happen again. I'm thinking we need an overflow for that. All right, there we go. We've got an overflow over this side, though I think I overpressurized the whole thing by letting some steam in. It's fine, it's fine. We've got two of them now. We should be golden. Whew. Okay, that's just one of the wonderful joys of, of oxygen not included. Now, where were we? You know, yes, we were explaining the joys of this. We'll increase that to 75 kilos now. So yes, that is why there's uh, two blobs of ice right here. Those two blobs of ice make sure this stays much cooler, and it just means that all that sour gas the moment it comes down, it doesn't matter how hot it is or if there's a little bit of uh, instability, it just instantly flashes instantly into liquid. Oh, I used the word instantly too many times, but yes, that's kind of the point. And if we've done it just right, yeah, just as that starts to run out, another fresh bunch of blobs run in. We're just barely keeping up with production. It's perfectly balanced. Uh, then over here you'll notice this this stays at about 555. That just means we we don't want to dump too much heat into the petroleum. Where is it? It boils at 540... Where is it? 538.9, plus 2 degrees. It takes an extra 2 degrees to push it over the edge. And we need to dump in just enough heat to make that go over. The, over. So that's why we've got it to 555. But we don't want to make it so hot, because the hotter we make it, the more we have to cool it down, so it just costs more energy. There's also a few other wonderful features in here, like, for example, there is a temp shift plate back there made out of diamond, and one there. However, there's, it's not there. If you put a temp shift plate made out of diamond there, it would dump heat into this section, and it would all become very counterproductive very quickly. Uh, there's a temperature shift plate in here, but it's made out of thermium. Thermium has amazing thermal conductivity, 220, as opposed to diamonds, 80. So because this is so good, it just it just means we're freezing that gas as soon as it hits. How are we doing there? Oh, you're actually pretty good. Let's put you up to, you know what, 100. You can handle it. And then slowly but surely, once this hits 200, I'll stop, I'll stop upping the pressure. But that's pretty much how the system works, though there are a few quirks we should really cover. Um, the blobs coming down here, or the, the way of putting this t in between these tiles and having a mesh tile here, that mesh tile is actually quite necessary, causes those blobs to form, or the droplets, it's called a droplet pump. But that forces the liquid, it forces the gases from down here up, which speeds up this whole system. It's not essential, but it, it was just a nice thing to throw in. Also, the hydrogen was thrown in here in the middle because we had no choice, and we just sort of had to build around it. So this is a sour gas boiler built around a hydrogen vent. And I think, I think we did pretty good. It turned out quite small. Uh, at the same time, the liquid methane, as it comes out of here, goes all the way up, dumps out most of its heat, and then we dump it in here. This is our natural gas storage area, and it's linked by a metal tile. This just means we dump as much pre-chill as we can into our sour gas to help cool it down. The main difficulty here is cooling down the sour gas. And let me show you what I mean. I'm going to jump over to my test map where I designed this sucker. This here is the test map where I was running a bunch of testing. Uh, this... This was sort of to figure out what kind of counterflow to use. You may be wondering, why don't I just put two metal tiles together and do something similar to, say, two metal tiles like this. Oh, wait. So like this, two metal tiles like that. Then we put in some igneous rock tiles. And then, you know, something along these lines. So we have two two metal tiles, then two insulated, then two metal, two insulated. Well, I tried that. And I also tried one metal, one insulated, and the one metal, one insulated just came out ahead. So I went with that in the end, though maybe not here, but, you know, it kind of worked out the same. So this this should be superior to using two metal tiles. Uh, as well as that, there is, oh, if you generate, if you're too efficient with your heat transfer, things get really bad really quickly. Uh, what we'll do here is we'll deconstruct that for a second. Actually, you know what, we'll just destroy it. Ta-da, we're going to put in a bunch of steel liquid vents. Now what's happening is, as that liquid flows down here, it's going to brush off these liquid vents and you'll see the temperature on them is changing. This sort of gives us a temperature gradient. Before, we didn't quite have that much. This is going to make things even more efficient temperature transfer. So this liquid oil, as it goes down, is going to exchange heat with the sour gas coming up much, much more efficiently. So all of that sour gas we're pushing out of there, it's transferring a bunch of its heat over to the crude oil that's coming down, making this whole thing more efficient, meaning we need less heat. Which is wonderful. Right? Well, let's skip forward a bit and see. Same map, several cycles later, and everything looks like it's going normally, but if we check down here, we'll notice the temperature in here has gone above 555, and it's continuing to get hotter and hotter. It's gone up to 600, and it's starting to get warmer and warmer down here. The reason being is it's, it's hard to think of it this way, but the crude oil we're dumping down here is actually acting as a coolant. It's sort of like evaporation cooling. It comes down, it absorbs some heat from down here, and then it flows back up. What's happening now, though, is we're not... we're cooling down over here, which this is actually doing. This is j dumping cooling into there, that's necessary. But we're actually requiring more cooling than we're requiring heat. 
So the oil comes down, wicks some of that heat, wicks wicks some of that heat away. But now that it's the temperature exchange is so efficient, it's not mo- removing as much heat as it used to. And this is being activated to use to cool down this. And it's not getting cooled enough anymore, which means it's slowly rising in temperature. And eventually, left unchecked, this will go above the, what's the overheat temperature? It's a thousand degrees, I think, or something. Yeah, about a thousand degrees. And when it does, this will overheat. So by making this more efficient, we've actually resulted in this whole thing going to, to burn out and die in a, sh- in a while. Now, there's ways around this. You could just strap a, say, a steam turbine up here. What's the natural gas? What's the sour gas coming out of Sour gas comes out at about 260 degrees, 250, 260. So say if we ran that sour gas under a steam turbine first, steam turbine could reduce its temperature by about 100 degrees, and then that 150C sour gas, we would counterflow down here against the uh, liquid methane coming up, and that extra reduction of 100 degrees would mean the whole thing would stabilize. This would not be overheating anymore, and the whole thing would work. However, that would have required building a steam turbine, a steam exchange room, and a bunch of other things that would have taken up a whole lot more space. So to keep this compact, we had to make this less efficient by deleting all of these and actually not utilizing this to its optimum potential. Now, I would like to say that the design we currently have... Actually, let's jump back to the map. I, I would like to say that this design is, you know, balanced on a knife's edge, and if you, you know, you go... Or a razor's edge, and if you go one side or the other where you, you get too efficient with your cooling or not efficient enough with your your gas cooling or gas heat exchanging that it will, will fall apart but it's more like it's balanced on the edge of a of a butter knife or an uncomfortably sharp spoon you've got a little bit of leeway to play with which is why i have a, a temperature shift plate back there and you know around the place this is not there is a tiny bit of leeway but if you're designing a sour gas boiler you have to be really careful that's why you i, I would always design these in a, a debug map first If you don't design them in a debug map, you're going to end up causing yourself huge grief. Trying to wing one of these is just not really an option. You can try it, but it will be extremely messy and extremely painful. Let's have a quick look at our colony summary. I'm interested to see... Oh, one moment. Yeah, I really should have done that earlier. Anyway, uh, average power produced. (laughs) There's our average power production. And yeah, that's that's a lot of power production. I think our power production went to play. You know what? Who cares? Wasted power. Yeah, we're, we're wasting. <laughs> I'm going to call that a win. Mini sour gas boiler for the win. Uh, this is a little bit overpressurized up here. This is because of the breakdown earlier. So we've got about 30 kilos of natural gas backed up. That means uh, we might be just stuck that way. I don't think there's any real way to stop that. You know what? We can increase the pressure in here probably a little bit more. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be draining some out of there maybe. Anyway, I think we'll, I think we'll call it a game or call it a day at that. Now, though, we have to, well, I'll have to do the insulation collection in the background. I have no idea how much we've got yet. We have 12.3 tons of insulation. That is 30 tiles, 30 tiles of piping, which if we check from here, it's about there. That's, we can get one pipe that far and we need to get two pipes about that far. Wow. Okay. So we're, we're, we're about a third of the way there, or wait, a quarter of the way there. Ouch, I'm going to need another source of insulation. Maybe we can find a planet further out that's all insulation. If we could just get a couple of tons of isoresin, we would be sorted. But yeah, that's that's for another day. Uh, I hope you enjoyed our, our little miniature sour gas boiler. I'm, I'm quite happy with how it turned out. Nice, neat and, and concise. And uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck. Mm-hmm.